Imagine if you knew all of the tech that was needed in order to get your app built without spending a fortune on AI tokens, without infinite AI loops, and without any security problems. In this video, I'm going to show you the exact tools that I use to build web apps using AI rapidly. So I've broken this video down into four separate parts. I'm going to go into a little bit of detail into each section, but if you want more additional detail, I'll show you how to get that as we go through the video. So firstly, we're going to have a look at the AI code editors, and which ones do I think that you guys should be using as a complete beginner as somebody who started off without any coding experience as well. And then I'm going to show you the best AI models out there. We're going to have a look at all the different options you have available to you, which ones should be avoided and which ones are good for what. And then we're going to actually dive into the tech stack that's needed to build apps. This is where the video is going to become a little bit more boring, but I can guarantee you if you get through this and you watch this, it's going to make so much sense to you. You're going to get a much better result when you're building. And then I'm actually going to show you how to actually get AI to do all of this stuff for you so you don't have to worry about any of it. It's going to be so much easier to build, so much quicker, so much efficient. You're never going to have any infinite AI loops. It's going to be a lot cheaper. You're going to get much better results. So to start off with, what tools are out there that we could use? Well, we've got V0, we've got Bolt.new, we've got Replit, Lovable, Cursor, and Claude Code. I've listed them in order of cheap and easeability all the way up to what is going to be the ultimate best but the hardest to use. So first of all, we're just gonna go through these very, very quickly, but if you wanna see a more detailed breakdown, I actually filmed a video where I built the exact same app in Lovable, Cursor, Bolt, and Replit, so you can go ahead and watch that and see in more detail which platforms are gonna be correct for you. First of all, V0, we're just gonna completely remove because it's actually quite expensive and you can only really build front-end UI. Bolt.new, again, you can build some really cool front-end UI, but it's very difficult to actually build anything of use with any back-end with like user accounts, databases. You do have a little bit more control than V0, but I'm gonna remove that one as an option. Lovable would be the next one on our list. Now, Lovable is probably the one that you're playing around with at the moment. And while I think Lovable is a very good starting point because you can, like you can see here, build some very, you know, beginner friendly UI and you can actually start to put databases into your app and you can start to build some fairly okay functioning apps. The problem I have with Lovable is again the amount of control that you have over it and the direction that Lovable is actually going in terms of their development. Now it is easier to integrate things like databases and back-end functionality using Lovable but you are going to end up being tied in to Lovable's platform if you build on top of Lovable. Now it can seem a lot easier to build and I can understand a lot of people would rather something that's easier to learn than do what I'm about to show you. But if you bear with me here, this is going to be a lot more worth your while down the line. So we're going to get rid of Lovable from this list. And the next one is Replit. Now Replit is probably the one that I would say is actually kind of the best beginner friendly while also having all of the benefits of customization that you could have with building. Now Replit is essentially the same as Lovable. It's a little bit more complicated in terms of the UI, but their agent in terms of building and their planning and just generally creating back-end functionality is an absolute absolute dream on Replit in comparison to all of these other tools. They've kind of already got all this stuff set up. It's very, very easy to learn. But again, it is exactly the same where you don't have a huge amount of control over the individual files that are being created and you're kind of at the mercy of the AI. You don't really learn the structure of your code. You don't really learn anything. You're just kind of dumping thoughts, hoping for the best that it's going to create what you want. So with all that being said, the one and only tool that I think you should be getting started with is Cursor. Now, obviously with Cursor, it does look a little bit more confusing. If I was a complete beginner, it is the tool that I learned on. It's the tool that I use every single day. It gives you the most control, the best customization. You can choose any language model you want and you actually learn as you're building. You understand the structure. It's a lot easier to debug and just generally in terms of everything, in terms of creating code that actually works and performance, Cursor is going to give you the best result out there for the price. The only problem is obviously you have to use what's called an IDE. Okay, This is a full code editor. Now, if you're looking to get into building apps long term, again, this is something you're going to have to learn at some point. The upfront cost in terms of time for learning this stuff is only going to be a few hours to a few days. It's going to be a little bit longer than learning tools like Lovable or Rep, but you're going to be thanking yourself if you put the time investment in now. Now, the only other thing I would say that's better than Cursor is Claude Code. This is reserved for people who are already using Cursor. You're getting the most out of it, but it's not quite good enough. You're getting a little bit frustrated. Claude Code is the next step up. It is the closest to having a proper agentic AI teammate in your business that actually can write incredibly powerful code. It is insane. There is nothing on the market like it. The only problem is it's quite expensive. So I'm on the max 5x plan. I'm paying $100 a month for Claude Code. You can use the $17 Pro plan, but you're not really going to get 
much usage out of it. Now with Claude Code, you can actually use it inside cursor, but you do have to get used to using the terminal because it is terminal based. Now, a lot of people get scared by this, so what I'm going to do is just show you an example of how this works, because realistically, it's not a lot more complicated or confusing than anything else. It just means to actually launch it, we have to write Claude in the terminal, and then it's going to boot it up like this. And then just like lovable replit bolt v0 or cursor, where we have a chatbot like this, we have exactly the same here where we can just type and we can get it to create features for us all within the terminal. So it's actually not that much more complicated to learn. It does have that higher barrier to entry. It is, it is obviously more expensive though, but this is probably the ultimate tool. So if you're a complete beginner, you're going to use cursor or Claude code with cursor. So you're definitely going to be getting started with cursor. Okay, so now we've got the AI code editors covered. What are the best AI models? So if we actually go inside cursor, right, if we click on this button down here, we have all of these different models that we can pick and choose from, which can be incredibly daunting if you're a complete beginner. So we're going to break down which ones are the best ones to get started with. Now there are two types of language models out there. You've got reasoning capability and then just standard language models. Now if we actually look inside cursor, the ones with a little brain next to them are ones with reasoning capability. And that basically means when you send it a message, it's going to think through the steps of what it needs to do before it actually starts writing code, which tends to give us a much better result so the ones that are actually worth using, there are four different language models out there which are the best. Now the first one is O3 or O4 Mini by OpenAI. So any model from OpenAI with an O in front of it is a reasoning model. So you've got O3, O4 Mini. Inside ChatGPT, you actually have O4 Mini High as well. Uh, now O3 is an incredibly powerful language model. It, it's not the best for code. And the problem, the reason for that is mostly because it takes quite a long time to actually code anything. But if you want a model to really think through complicated problems, O3 is probably the best one to go for just because it can think for a long time. So it can spend like a minute or two actually thinking through something and analyzing and figuring things out before it goes ahead and writes stuff. As a result, though, if you're trying to use it as your day-to-day -day daily driver for coding, it's quite slow to use. O4 Mini is a little bit quicker. Now, when you're coding, a lot of the time, you want to be using a model that can understand your entire code base because it needs to understand where the problems could be, how to fix those problems, and where to find things. And that means you want to be using something like Gemini 2.5 Pro. This is, or used to be, my daily driver. This used to be the one that I would use every single day. It seems to be a lot more accurate. If I want it to create something, it will create me that thing it will sometimes mess up and obviously create bugs but it's not going to create random files it hallucinates less it seems to be a lot more precise and i think one of the reasons for this is because of the size of the context window which means it can actually understand a lot more about all of your different files it can understand how your code structured and how everything goes together which means you're going to get a much better result so that would be gemini 2.5 pro inside cursor so gemini 2.5 pro is very good for creating functionality it's not very good for creating ui and design if you want ui and design I recommend using Claude 4 Sonnet. Claude 4 Sonnet is basically the same as Gemini 2.5 Pro. The problems I have with Sonnet 4 is it will hallucinate more. It will sometimes create random files where you don't want it to, so you have to be a lot more precise in your instructions, and I'll show you how to do that later. But it is incredibly good at creating really cool designs, and it has a smaller context window, which is obviously a downside when you're trying to create complicated features or debug problems. But if you're using Claude Code, okay, which we discussed earlier, this thing here, Claude Code, then then you only have the choice to use Claude 4 Sonnet or Claude 4 Opus. Now, if you use Claude Code, you will spend most of your time using Claude Opus. It's going to give the AI the best context. It's going to completely understand your entire code base. It is going to be able to write the best code without hallucinations. It can one-shot bugs that are a massive problem that could take you five to ten messages with something like Gemini or Claude 4 Sonnet. Claude 4 Opus is honestly insane. Now, if you're using Claude Code, it is already integrated in it. It's very, very easy to use inside here. It will automatically use it. If you're using Cursor, you can select Claude for Opus here with the max mode, and it kind of does the same thing as Claude Code, just not quite as good. Now, if you use it inside Cursor, it can become quite expensive. So it's actually cheaper to use Claude for Opus inside Claude Code. Okay, so those are the top language models out there. That gives you a little bit of an understanding of the different language models to use. I know that this can seem quite daunting and complicated if you're a complete beginner, and I am going to show you how to make this whole thing easier in just a minute. So now we know the best AI models, what is the tech stack that's needed? So now we understand the code editor and the best AI models to use. What is the tech stack that we need to be using in order to build our app? Well, what is a tech stack to start off with? Tech stack basically consists of different tools or different software 
or different frameworks that all plug in together in order to make your app work. So for example, every app that you build will require a database. Every app that you build will require people to log in and create accounts. Every app will need payments so you can actually charge for your app. Every app needs to be deployed, okay? Every app needs to have a coding language and possibly a framework on top of it in order to get it built, okay? There is no avoiding this. Tools like Lovable and Replit and V0 automatically use a language called Node.js. But in order to build an app on top of it, the easiest thing to use is something called Next. JS. I'm not going to spend too much time explaining what it is, how it works and all that, because you guys don't even care. All you care about is if it works. So Next.js is essentially a framework on top of Node.js. That's all I'm going to go into detail. So Next.js is the one thing that you need to be using. In terms of database, you want to be using something called Superbase. Okay, Superbase basically means you can just store things in a database really easily. It's quick and easy to integrate. Basically, Superbase is very, very cheap as well. If you actually look at their pricing for free, you can have 50,000 active monthly users without spending a penny. It's it's incredibly easy, 100,000 monthly active users for just $25 a month. So incredibly cheap, incredibly easy to get set up as a database, but we wanna be able to create accounts. So users can sign in, sign up, create accounts. Now you can actually do this with Superbase, but the one that I would recommend is something called Clerk. This basically means you can manage sign in and sign up, and it looks like this. Okay, you end up having a sign in and sign up on your website like this. It's easy to integrate. It's literally one line of code. You plug it in. They manage things like security. You can sign up with Google, email. It will send a verification code to your email. It's, it's basically, it is ultimately the best authentication tool out there. It's so easy to use. This is the one that I would use for that. And then we need somewhere to actually deploy our app. And for that, we're going to use Vercel. So Vercel.com. So Vercel is the company that owns V0, and it's also the same company that created Next.js. So it's kind of a very, very easy, this is a very common tech stack to use. A lot of people use this. There's a lot of tutorials on how to use it out there. It's been around for a while. AI understands it incredibly well, so it's quite a good one to use, especially if you're trying to build. It's also incredibly cheap and quick and easy to deploy with Vercel. I've got some tutorials on that on this YouTube channel as well. If we go into pricing, you can do it for free and then $20 per month just to build and deploy your first app. So again, very, very cheap to get started. We've got the AI models and the tech stack. How can we do this all easily? Because we figured all this stuff out, but now we need to go ahead and plug this all together and actually build our first and that is where you want to use something like CodeSpring because CodeSpring becomes your AI technical copilot to help you vibe code any app. It brings all of these things together and makes it so easy to build. So I'm going to walk you through a demonstration of how CodeSpring can help you. CodeSpring, we just go in and we describe the project that we are building. We list out the features, how we want it to work, kind of what you would initially send into something like Lovable or Cursor, but we give it to CodeSpring first. Now CodeSpring kind of acts as a second brain. It will take all of that and I've got tutorials on how to use this on the YouTube channel, but it will basically explain all the different features that you want in your app. And it's gonna figure out all of the tech that's needed to get that app built. So I spoke to you about Next.js before, I spoke to you about Superbase, I spoke to you about Clark, Clerk and then Vercel for deployment. And then it's gonna figure out other things for styling and animations, and then any specific tech that's needed for the specific app that you're building. It's gonna figure all of that stuff out in one place. So you don't have to worry about the tech. So with CodeSpring, it has a boilerplate. And if you don't know what a boilerplate is, it's essentially a starting template that has all of the tech already figured out. It has user accounts already integrated and created. It has payments already integrated and coded in. It already has the database created and coded in and integrated. So it's incredible incredibly easy to get set up. You don't have to worry about half of that tech and it's already built ready to go. And in fact, CodeSpring itself was built on top of the CodeSpring boilerplate. So I'll give you a demonstration of how this works. So for example, this is actually an app that I've built on top of CodeSpring's boilerplate. It's called Storyboard, but you can see here we've got a basic website. We have user accounts, so you can go ahead and sign in and create accounts. This is all default within the boilerplate. So we can go to the dashboard page. This dashboard page here, right, everything that you see on the left-hand side down here was already created inside that boilerplate plate. We have different pages that we can view inside our app. All of this sidebar stuff is already created. We have the ability to upgrade plans. All of that payment systems are already being created, just like when we go into CodeSpring, if we want to upgrade, it's £49 per month or £249 per year. All of the payment system is already created. It locks down the entire app if there's not a payment that's gone through. Obviously, it's got user accounts. It's already got the database integrated. Basically, it means you can just run this and everything that you see here will already have been created for you. But the best part about CodeSpring is when you plan out your build and it lists out all the features for your app is it will actually plan out not only what those features are 
and like I showed you earlier, the tech that's needed in those features, but it's also gonna describe how those features should work. So it's gonna create a list of instructions and user journey and the workflow of, you know, for example, if I land on a page and I click a button, what happens? And this is all done just by interpreting your initial prompt and it will go ahead and plan all of this out for your individual features. It will then take it one step further and create custom instructions explaining how to actually build those specific features. It will describe, for example, what files need to be created for the front end UI. It will describe, for example, any server actions or APIs or back end functionality, where they should go, how they should be coded, what stuff needs to go into them for your feature to work. It will also describe things like databases and it uses the context of that tech stack that's already created in the CodeSpring boilerplate. It uses the context of the notes that it's taken on that specific feature and it creates us these downloadable files so we can just click this button and we can then paste these directly into cursor and just give it to cursor and it will build it for us we don't even have to write any prompt and it does this for every single feature each feature will have its own requirement doc on how to be built explaining how the features work how the ui should be created how the database works any edge cases or problems that could come up and all of these features will work with each other. All of these features are designed to work with the boilerplate. So this basically means any problems that you have with the tech stack have already been handled because you just duplicate the boilerplate from CodeSpring, you plan out your entire app, and then you just download and give all of these requirement docs directly to the AI and just tell it to read all of them and code the entire thing for you. And if you go onto this channel, you can actually watch this video here or even this entire video here. And I'm gonna show you how to deploy an entire app using this software. It's gonna show you how to get everything set up, build and deploy and get your app working literally just by downloading these prompts here. So CodeSpring is gonna be one of the quickest and easiest things to help you get your app built and deployed. You have a full progress board so you can see all of the features that you want to build. You can see which features you've currently completed and as you complete them, you can move them between columns. It's very, very easy to manage all of your tasks and you can plan as many different app builds as you want. So whichever app you're currently working on, you can have multiple projects on the go at a time. You can use that boilerplate with as many projects as you want. It's gonna make your life so much easier and if you want to see how to use it again there's loads of different tutorials so those are the exact tools that i would use to build apps with ai first i would start off with using cursor i would then go ahead and grab a code spring subscription at the moment it's 49 pounds per month that price may go up as we start to add new features i would actually then duplicate the template i would plan out my app with code spring download those requirement docs give them all directly into cursor and i would just tell it to build that app now if we use claude code it'd be exactly the same thing and then i would deploy that using Vercel. that is exactly how i would get ai to do everything for me so you don't even need to write a single prompt you don't need to figure out the tech that's needed code spring will handle all of this stuff for you if you want to see more tutorials on that there are video tutorials on our youtube channel but if you grab a code spring subscription there is a full course showing you how to download and set up cursor there's a full course showing you all the different tools that you need and how to get them all set up like how to set up superbase how to link and create your github how to set up the so you can have it deployed there's a full course showing you what cursor is how it works how to actually use it to write code then there's a full course showing you how to download that template and i'm basically walking through all of the files in there and then there's a full course showing you how to build a full note taker app from start to finish getting it deployed using CodeSpring. i'm going to show you exactly how to plan out your app using this mind map planner give all of that data and information directly to cursor to then build your app for you and once you've done all of that we actually have a marketing tool already integrated inside CodeSpring as well so you can pick the app that you've currently planned depending on who you're targeting you can then go ahead and create with ai carousels to post onto instagram or tiktok to automatically market your product without you having to do any work and it uses all of that context and information from that app that you've planned in the dashboard so if you want to grab a subscription for that i will leave the link down below in the description if you guys have any questions let me know in the comments if you want to see any more videos like this don't forget to like subscribe and let me know any other video ideas